Good evening, and welcome to Conservation Law Foundation's Green Gala. My name is Andrew Bowdy. And my name is John Aubrey. And I am Sharon Malt. As members of CLS board community and the gala co-chairs, we are so happy that you have joined us tonight. We had hoped to welcome you to our gala in person, of course, and while current circumstances have made that impossible, this virtual gala is allowing us to open this special evening to so many more of you from all over New England, and for that we are grateful. Our goal tonight is to not only celebrate all that you help us to accomplish here at CLF, but also to help you feel connected to each other and the incredible work that you make possible every day work that is even more vital during such tumultuous times. We may be virtual, but I hope you can feel the energy from each of you, this powerful network of champions, pushing for climate action and justice in New England. And what better organization to join in the fight for a thriving and healthy New England than Conservation Law Foundation? CLF's advocates are experts in law, policy, science, and markets, which we use to push for innovative solutions to this region's biggest environmental challenges. And we are deeply connected to our advocacy because we are working in our own communities alongside our friends and neighbors. Before we get started with tonight's program and honorees, I'd like to remind you that we have an online auction featuring a wide array of very special items, from trips around New England to unique experiences and holiday gifts. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to all of the local vendors, individuals, and businesses for their generosity in providing so many wonderful items that you can bid on tonight. By bidding on these auction items, you not only get a great experience or gift, you are also donating to ensure that CLF can continue our important work across New England. You can access the auction by visiting the auction tab on our event page. You don't wanna miss out on these special auction items, so please get those bids in early. Auction bidding closes at midnight tonight. But bidding on auction items is not the only way that you can give to CLF tonight. You can donate any amount to our Fund a Need campaign to support CLF's work toward a carbon-free New England, help in the fight against big oil, ban single-use plastics, and protect the endangered North Atlantic right whale. So please visit the Fund a Need tab on your event page below this video to donate and join the fight. There's a saying that anyone can hold the helm when the sea is calm. CLF is honored to have Brad Campbell at its helm during one of the stormiest times of our nation's history and a challenging time for advocacy. Brad has led Conservation Law Foundation with a fearlessness and grace that has helped us reach incredible milestones under seemingly impossible odds. Please join me in welcoming the President of Conservation Law Foundation, Brad Campbell. Thank you, Andrew, John, and Sharon for that warm welcome, and for your and the host committee's leadership and hard work in putting together CLF's very first virtual Green Gala. I also want to thank all of you, our CLF members, donors, supporters, and friends, who are joining us tonight for a unique evening of celebration, recognition, and inspiration. I know 2020 has been a tumultuous year for us all, our friends, loved ones, and neighbors. No one could have predicted the chaos, unrest, and uncertainty that have defined this year and disrupted the lives of every person in New England, the nation, and across the globe. But even in the face of these headwinds, You've been steadfast in your support. Together, we've continued to gain ground on building a healthy and thriving New England for all. I'm so proud to stand with you tonight as we reflect on our victories against long odds and honor CLF partners and leaders who have been critical to our success. We will be recognizing two of those champions later tonight, but first I want to express appreciation for the sponsors who've helped to make this evening possible. And in particular, a special thank you to Windy Films, Cashman Companies Incorporated, Jess and Matt Chamberlain, Gordon and Taffy Hall, Sharon and Brad Malt, John Aubrey and Andrew Bowdy, Jim and Kathy Stone and the Plymouth Rock Foundation, the Lehner Family Fund, Kate and Howard Kilgus, 
Sue and Chris Clem, and Whitney and Tizzy Hatch. 2020 has tested us like no other year in CLF's history. No one could have imagined in January that just a few months into the year, we would be dealing with a staggering pandemic and its devastating economic fallout, let alone facing a long overdue reckoning with our country's history of white supremacy. And of course, we face those challenges still, on top of a federal government stymied by years of climate denial and intent on tacking our basic environmental safeguards, damage that will take years to undo. But even amid these struggles, there's room for hope. Together, we are emerging stronger. Just in the last year, you have helped us to pass strong climate laws that will drastically cut climate damaging emissions across New England, advance a groundbreaking lawsuit to hold a major fossil fuel company accountable for its climate deceit, fight back against federal rollbacks of water protections, clean car standards, and New England's only national marine monument, and you helped us demand justice for the communities that have borne the brunt of both pollution and the global pandemic because of decades of racist policies. As we reflect on a year defined by collective unease about the future, we should be proud of what we've achieved in the face of uncertainty. CLF has never settled for doing what's easy. We fight for what's right and we never give up. We must continue to tap into that resolve, even with a president-elect committed to climate action. Now is not the time to be complacent. Remember, even when we've had a more progressive president, environmental issues have been an afterthought, especially when there's a divided Congress. Leadership at the state level has been the essential catalyst for better policy in Washington and healthier communities at home. The work ahead is not going to be easy, but do not underestimate your power and all that we've achieved here in New England. Because of our work together, the next generation of New Englanders can hope for a livable climate, one with cleaner air and water, and an end to the injustices that have plagued our most vulnerable communities for decades. Thank you for all that you do and all that you've helped to make possible for the people and places of New England. Last week, Hurricane Laura made landfall this in country Louisiana has lost as one of the strongest. $500 billion because of climate protection agency finalized a rule that shrinks the number of water. In the future, we may look back at 2020 as the year we decided to keep driving off the climate cliff or to take the last exit. soon, so we've got to keep going.
CLF's Outside the Box Award recognizes those leaders who are using creativity, innovation, and community engagement to take action on the most challenging issues facing our neighborhoods. It is named after the late, great John Hammond, a longtime CLF trustee and supporter. John Hammond's most lasting legacy was his constant push for us to do better, to be better, and to set our sights higher. Councillor Michelle Wu embodies what it means to be an outside-the-box leader, one whom I'm honored to call a friend and who's been a trusted ally to CLF for many years. Michelle Wu is a mom, a daughter of immigrants, and a fierce believer that we can solve our deepest problems through building community. As a Boston City Councilor, Michelle has worked to deliver bold systemic change and redefine what is possible through city leadership. With her vision, Boston has the potential to be a model for climate action and environmental justice. Working with community activists, Michelle has proposed the first comprehensive city-level Green New Deal, laying out a roadmap for delivering the structural changes we need to provide clean energy, good jobs, and healthy, connected communities. It is my honor to present Councillor Michelle Wu with CLF's Outside the Box Award. Thank you so much, Brad, for your kind introduction and for your leadership. You and the entire Conservation Law Foundation team have been a beacon of inspiration in these uncertain times, a bulwark against injustice, and a bedrock for organizing our communities toward the resilient future we all deserve. I've been so proud to take on the big fights alongside you all. CLF is always there on the side of justice, mobilizing again and again to protect public transportation as a public good, this time fighting to stop MBTA cuts during a pandemic because transit is essential, standing up against an electrical substation in a residential community, in a floodplain, in an environmental justice neighborhood of East Boston, standing for equity and transparency in how we regulate and plan for our community's needs, especially in public access to the waterfront. And one of my favorites, you all led the way in organizing the coalition for the single biggest step that Boston could take for green infrastructure and resilient development in the city, passing our local wetlands protection ordinance, which has empowered the Boston Conservation Commission to protect natural resource areas. It makes this award that much more meaningful coming from partners in the movement. In this moment, we all have to reach outside the box. As the pandemic has exposed and deepened the inequities our communities face, it's not only possible to reimagine our systems, but absolutely necessary to transform them. In Boston, we need our own city-level Green New Deal and just recovery. That would mean accelerating decarbonization, resilient stormwater infrastructure, growing the urban tree canopy, a blue New Deal, and also housing justice, an equitable small business recovery, green workforce development, food justice, and an urban conservation core and building that wide coalition to reach every community. Our issues are intersectional and our solutions must come from the communities most impacted. We'll emerge stronger when every voice is heard and when we center the pursuit of justice through our recovery. Climate justice is racial and economic justice. In this small window of time remaining to decarbonize our economy and our society, we can't afford the cost of delay. We can't settle for reactive government. We need bold, urgent leadership that lifts up our communities. That is the legacy of Boston and New England, where there has always been a movement to fight for what's right and to change the conversation on what's possible. From revolution to civil rights and marriage equality, home to the first public park, public school and public library in the country, when we step up to lead, we change the course of history. CLF has been a driving force in that history for over half a century, and I can't wait to see all that you take on in the years ahead. Thank you to everyone here for supporting this critical work and the bold, urgent leadership of this organization. And now, it is our pleasure to introduce Lake Street Dive, 
a band from Boston that is at the forefront of environmental advocacy and has pledged to offset the carbon emissions of their travel. Lake Street Dive performs all around the world and has many chart-topping hits. And tonight, they will perform specially for us. So let's give a big New England welcome to Lake, Lake Street, Street Dive. Dive. Hello, we are Lake Street Dive, and we are honored to be a part of this Green Gala tonight supporting the Conservation Law Foundation. We recently recorded a song called Making Do about the environment and future generations and felt compelled to speak up about the world and meet the challenges that threaten our communities every day, which is much in line with the work that the Conservation Law Foundation is doing. And so without further ado, please enjoy Making Do. President's Award honors visionary leaders who are making major contributions toward creating a healthy and thriving New England for all. National Geographic photojournalist Brian Scarry has produced some of the most enduring and iconic images of the oceans all over the world. 
he has used his unique lens to raise awareness about a wide range of issues threatening our ocean's health, from the climate crisis to the plight of the critically endangered North Atlantic right whale. Although Brian travels the world, he's now back home here in New England, focusing his lens on the Gulf of Maine, which is warming faster than any body of water in the world. The Gulf of Maine is an important laboratory for climate solutions and for understanding the challenges facing our oceans and coastal communities today. It is my honor to present this award to a valued friend and partner of CLF and our oceans advocacy for many years, Brian Scarry. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, Brad, especially. You know, this really means so much to me, and I'm deeply honored and grateful for this special recognition. You know, throughout my career, I've had the pleasure of collaborating with a number of great organizations, but few, if any, are as effective as the Conservation Law Foundation. CLF is unique in their in intricate knowledge about key environmental problems and the necessary solutions and even more important, CLF's ability to create strategies to achieve this success. This often unsung yet noble work is never done for individual gain, but rather for the betterment of our planet and every creature living on it. I remain so proud to work with the CLF and each employee dedicating their talents and expertise to making a positive difference. I learned long ago that human beings are especially visual creatures that we bond emotionally to powerful images, and that if we combine those images with good science, then we can tell a very compelling story. And I've also learned that human beings tend to be reasonable, and if we're presented with evidence that science and images provide, then we will draw the right conclusion. This is what I try to do through my work, visual storytelling with science. I've dedicated my life to showing people not only how amazing wildlife is, but how fragile it is, and that it's not too big to fail. I feel that it's important to put a face on that, giving it personality by showing the real issues, offering solutions, and illuminating a way forward. The hope is that if you do this right with journalistic integrity, people will be more informed and will make better decisions. And as a result, maybe we can collectively move that needle in a direction that benefits everyone. Our planet, I've learned, functions as a finely tuned machine where every creature, great and small, plays a vital role. I've come to see this as the gears of a finely crafted Swiss watch where some gears are turning slower while others are spinning faster, but together they function perfectly. If you begin to remove those gears, however, the watch breaks down. And if we remove components of our finely tuned planet, pieces like the critically endangered North Atlantic right whale, for example, then we threaten everything, including ourselves. Every ecosystem has this connectivity woven within, like a complex tapestry. We can no longer see ourselves apart from nature, but need to see our lives and fates directly tied to it. I often say that the ocean is dying a death from a thousand cuts. The ocean is resilient and has the ability to heal itself, but when so many assaults are occurring simultaneously, the ocean faces irreparable harm. Every single year, we're dumping in excess of 18 billion pounds of plastic into the ocean. We drill and rake the sea floor and take all the fish. In fact, 90% of the big fish in the ocean have been taken, taken since World War II, and one half of Earth's coral reefs are now gone. We very much live on a water planet where 98% of Earth's biosphere, the livable, habitable planet where life can exist, is water. Every breath we take, every other breath we take, more than 50% of the oxygen we breathe comes from the ocean. It's in our own self-interest then to explore this watery world and to protect it. Science tells us that at least 40% of Earth's oceans must be protected to ensure a healthy future. Yet today, only a tiny percentage of the ocean is protected, maybe 2%. And here in New England, there's not even one single no-take marine reserve. The Gulf of Maine 
Our backyard is warming 99% faster than the rest of the global ocean. It has become the epicenter of oceanic global climate change. And what's happening here, I believe, in many ways, will be a harbinger, a bellwether, if you will, of what the rest of the planet can expect in the time ahead. But it's not too late. We can reverse that tide if we act now. I believe that we are living at a pivotal moment in history where maybe for the very first time we actually understand both the problems and the solutions. We simply need the collective will to move towards those solutions. The question is, will we simply bear witness to the demise or will we, as Cousteau urged a generation ago, protect what we love? I believe it will be the latter. And I remain cautiously optimistic that our better angels will prevail. But this will not happen without a well-defined strategy that includes science, images, and dedicated individuals. To understand and protect our own backyard, the ocean here in New England, there is no one better positioned, no one more trusted than Conservation Law Foundation to lead these very important efforts. In closing, I would like to introduce composer and performer Emmy Ferguson for a very special musical performance. She is a renowned flautist and is regularly known around the world for her hauntingly beautiful music that stretches boundaries of what is expected of a modern musician. We are thrilled, I am thrilled, to have her play while displaying a specially selected grouping of my photographs. Thank you so much, Emmy.
What a beautiful way to end this evening. A big thank you to our honorees, Boston City Councilor Michelle Wu and National Geographic photographer Brian Scarry. Also our musical guests tonight, Emmy Ferguson and Lake Street Dive. Most importantly, thank you to our friends from across New England who have joined us tonight. Yes, 2020 has been a difficult and stressful year, and 2021 will have its share of big challenges. But together we can face those challenges and win. Now, more than ever, as we take on the big fights that we will face in 2021, we cannot succeed without your support. You have until midnight to bid on the wonderful auction items from across New England. There's something there for everyone, especially with the holidays right around the corner. So please get those bids in by midnight. We also need your active engagement in CLF's advocacy. Go to www.clf.org and sign up for our e-news. It is the best way to keep up with the latest developments in our work and we'll, we will give you plenty of ways to take action. Tell your friends about CLF and get your community engaged with our advocacy. Follow CLF on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Become a CLF member. As a CLF member, you have the opportunity to stand with us in court for our groundbreaking legal battles to protect New England. With your donation and your engagement, together, we will emerge stronger. Thank you for joining us tonight. We wish you a happy holiday season. Good night. Good night. Good night.